The best color grading plugin for Final Cut Pro just got even better. If I'm not making quick adjustments with Final Cut Pro's built-in color grading tools, or I need to really take control of my color grade to make detailed adjustments, then I use Color Finale 2 Pro. They recently released an update which gives us some really useful and some really powerful color grading tools. And in this video, I'm going to go over four features by grading a few clips and highlighting how each of those features help me to color grade better. The Color Finale team have also allowed me to give away Color Finale Pro to three of you guys, so stick around to find out more about the giveaway and how you can get 20% off this amazing plugin. A while back, I did a video called Advanced Color Grading in Final Cut Pro, where I go over the Color Finale 2 Pro plugin in detail. I'm going to cover some of the same stuff in this video, but if you're not familiar with Color Finale Pro, you might want to check that video out as well to see some of the other features that I'm not going to be covering in this video. I'll leave a link to that down below, but let's get started with the first new feature, which is selective masking with HSL. The first shot we're going to grade today is this shot of this pug. What a magnificent specimen. Pugs are actually my favorite dogs, so hit that like button if you also like pugs. The first thing we're going to do is double click to add the Color Finale Pro plugin. And before we get to the HSL masking, I'd like to just make a few adjustments to this clip to make it look a little bit better. I'd like to fix the white balance because we have a little bit of a purple tint to the shot. So I'm going to use the color picker to do an auto white balance and let's just select one of these pearly whites somewhere over there. We've gotten rid of that purple tint so that already looks a little bit better and now we'll head over into the layers section to make a few further adjustments. I'm going to add a color wheels adjustment here. The first adjustment I'm going to make here is to add a little bit of green to my shadows just to get rid of that purple tint in the darker areas. And then I want to warm the shot up just a little bit in the highlights so I'm going to drag the highlights color wheel here and I'm just going to push this a little bit more towards yellow and orange. This is what it looks like before and this is what it looks like now that we've corrected the white balance. Next I want to make sure that the pug pops a little bit more and I'm going to do that by warming him up a little bit. In this sort of lighting situation I feel like he would be a little bit more beige golden in color. So what I'm going to do is add another color wheels here and on this one I'm going to add a mask. There are a couple of different masking options here which I talk about in that video that I mentioned before, but I'm going to use the HSL mask. And what this allows me to do is to select a range of hues, saturation and luma values to create my mask. So I'm going to select this eyedropper tool and then I'm going to select the pug's fur. If I come over here to display and I change that to mask input and mask, I'll get these little purple areas over here that show me what's going to be affected by this color wheels adjustment. Then I'll come over here to the color dropper with the plus icon and I'll add the different tones of this pug's fur to the selection. I think something like that should do the trick. Now I'm not too worried about these areas in the background that are being selected. I don't mind too much if those get warmed up as well. I'm going to change the display here to composite masks so that you can see a black and white view of what's being selected. All the white areas will be affected by the color wheels adjustment and all the black areas will be left alone. So I just want to refine this mask a little bit. I'll play with the input levels here to try and minimize how much is being adjusted in the background here. And I'll probably just adjust this a little bit as well, somewhere about there. To soften the selection a little bit, I'm going to use this blur feature over here. You just need a little bit. Something like that is enough to make the selection nice and soft, which essentially is like feathering. I'll go back and select result from my display here. And now any changes I make to this color wheel will happen on this selection that we've created. So as an example, I'm just going to boost the saturation so you can see what area is being affected. And you can see just the pug's fur really is what's, what's being affected. So now I'd like to warm up this pug's fur. I'm going to come over to my mids and I'm going to put a little bit of orange yellow warmth in the midtones, and I'm going to do the same in the highlights. And I'll probably boost the saturation of those just a little bit, just a fraction. So let's look at what it looked like before. That's before and that's after. So now we have that nice warm beige color in the pug's fur. For the next feature, which is a new filter layer with blur and sharpness options, we're going to use the same shot that we just color graded because I just can't get enough of the space. 
To add the new filter, simply click on these two arrows and click filter. And we've got three different blur options here and sharpness. So looking at the blur options with box blur, if I set that to about 50%, We've got this kind of blur. If I look very closely, I'm not sure you'll see it on the screen recording. You've got these weird little blocks. So I'm not a big fan of box blur personally, but disc blur is quite nice because that sort of mimics what it would look like if your camera was out of focus. So you can use that to create some depth in your shot. And then Gaussian blur is a nice smooth blur, which is really nice. You can get some really soft blurs using that. So let's switch this over to disc blur. We'll set this to around 30%. And then we're going to create a layer mask so we can keep the pug in focus and blur the left and right side of the frame to create a little bit more depth of field. For this, I'm going to select an edge mask and I'm going to come over here and just blur out everything to the left hand side of this pug. Let me just first jump to the end of this clip and position my mask so that this dot is sort of at the edge of his body. And then I'm going to track that backwards. This might take a little while, so I'll speed that up. And let's have a look at how well that tracked. If you look at this mask, it did a pretty good job of staying on the left hand side of the pug. Now let's add another edge mask and this time I'm going to blur the right hand side. And I'll stick that kind of at the edge of his body over there. And then I'm going to track forward for this mask. Now with both those masks tracked, you can see we've been able to isolate the pug from the left and the right hand side of the frame. I'll turn this effect off and back on again so you can see what it does. There it is without the blur on the left and the right hand side, and there it is with the blur. So we've created a little bit more depth with this shot. So I'm going to call this disc blur because I'm going to add another filter and I don't want to confuse the two. And this one I'm going to call sharpen. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to set the sharpness here to 100. I would probably never go this high, but for the sake of this example, and because I'm not sure what you'll see on the screen recording, I'm going to set it to 100. Now I want the exact same masks with the same tracking. So instead of having to do that again, I'll just select my masks, select both of these masks, right click, hit copy, and then on my sharpen filter, I'll add a new layer mask. And over there, I'm going to right click and hit paste. On each of these masks, I'm going to invert the mask so that I'm essentially affecting the middle and not what's on the left and the right hand side of the frame. And let's zoom in here so you can get a better idea of what is happening. I'll go back to my sharpen filter and I'll probably drop this to around 60% or so. This is before the sharpen filter was applied and this is after. So let's fit this back to this viewer window and let's have a look at the before and after of this entire shot. These two new features alone make Color Finale 2 Pro even better. If you're sold and you're thinking of buying Color Finale 2 Pro, then go ahead and use the coupon code BRAD20 at checkout to get 20% off. By the way, this coupon code applies to any of the Color Finale products and I'll leave a link down below for you. Another great feature is the shuffle layer, which allows you to mix and change up color channels to create unique and creative looks. To show you how the shuffle layer works, I'm going to use yet another pug shot and I'm going to double click on Color Finale Pro to add the plug into my clip and I'm going to hit edit layers to open up my layers panel and I'll click on these two arrows and add the shuffle filter. Now how this works is you can remap red, green and blue channels to any of the other channels to direct white, direct black or to a custom direct color that you can color pick. You can also mix your red, green and blue channels and you can also invert your channels with these little toggle boxes over here. For some reason, these little down arrows and red, green and blue don't quite line up with the little dots, but this is the red channel, this is your green channel, this is blue, direct white, direct black, and your custom direct color. Now at first glance, when you start playing around with this, you might wonder why on earth would you use this shuffle filter? Well, let me show you how to create a retro look. First, I'm going to select a custom direct color using the color picker and I'm going to select this orange toy on the floor. This is kind of that orange brown color that you would find in a retro type grade. So I'm going to remap my red to that color and I'm going to set my blue to black. So now this looks awful, but the trick here is to use the mix slider. That's what makes the shuffle layer so powerful. So I'll go all the way down to zero and I'll slowly introduce this effect. 
As you can see, we're starting to get a cool little retro look at about 25%. So I feel like I have too much green up in the window. So I'm going to come over to my green channel and I'm going to just drop that a little bit over there. It's already not looking too bad, but there are a few other adjustments we can make to make this look even better. Let's add a curves adjustment, and I'm going to use that to increase the contrast in the foreground of the scene here, specifically the couch and the pug, but also these elements in the front. So let's go ahead and adjust the contrast. I'll drop the shadows a little bit, and I'll boost some of the mids and highlights. Now, I don't want to boost the saturation, which is what's happening here. So I can change this from master and RGB to just luma and RGB, and that will only affect the brightness values and not the saturation. So we can come in here and just fine tune this contrast. I think something like that looks good. And now I want to add a layer mask so that I can mask out the window. For that, I'm going to use an edge mask and we can just adjust it like this and pop it up there in the window. So now if I hide this layer and show it again, you'll see how we've just added some contrast into the foreground of the scene. You can also play around with the contrast mix here if you need to, to kind of fine tune that contrast, but I quite like it at 100%. Lastly, I'm going to head over to the bottom part of my Color Finale plugin in the Inspector window, and I'm going to add some film emulation. So basically add a little bit of grain to sell that retro look. So let's enable it. We'll boost the grain amount and we'll increase the grain size a little bit. Let me actually zoom in so that you can see what's happening. This is before we added grain, and this is after. And now this pug looks like he's in the 80s. The shuffle filter is also useful if you want to create stylized looks and color grades. Let me show you another quick example. Let's select a custom color. I'll select this orange in her hair, and I'm going to remap the blue channel to that direct color. So that's quite a stylized look if that's something that you're going for. But as I mentioned, what makes these shuffle layers so powerful is the ability to change the mix value. So let's slowly introduce that look, and I'll probably set it to around 40%. For this particular shot, I'm also going to add a curves adjustment and I'm just going to boost the contrast here a little bit. And I'll create a small fade here in the blacks. Something like that looks pretty good to me. And just like that, you have a nice stylized look for your footage. The last new feature that I'm going to go over in this video is the ability to group shape masks together. So we have another clip of the same model in the same location. I'm going to copy this clip using Command C and paste attributes using Command Shift V to paste my Color Finale Pro plugin. So now we've got that same look and I'd like to make a few adjustments here. I'm going to hit Edit Layers and I'm going to add a Curves Adjustment. Now on this Curves Adjustment, I want to brighten these stairs as well as our subject a little bit. So I'm going to boost that up slightly in the shadows and I'm going to boost the highlights a little bit just to keep a bit of contrast, but also just to brighten it up a little bit. Now, I don't want to affect the whole image like that. I just want the foreground and the model to be affected. So I'm going to add a layer mask. And in my layer mask, I'm going to start with a rectangular mask. I'm going to use that for the stairs. So let's just bring that up. Somewhere around there looks good. Go a little bit above the stairs. And then I'm going to add a elliptical mask, which I'm going to use to mask the model. Now to create a shape mask group, I can either click on this folder or I can select both masks, right click and say group. Now using this group, I can always track if I need to, or I can just adjust the feather. This is really handy if you have a ton of different masks that you've grouped together for a particular shot and you want to affect them all in the same way. I can select the feather here and hit 50%. Let's just change this display to mask input and mask. So you can see what's being affected here. I'll set the feather back to zero. There was the hard mask and at 50%, we've got this nice soft mask. I might even go all the way to 100%, just make it really soft. So let's set this back to result. And now if I turn this curves adjustment on and off, you can see how it affects just the stairs and that model, brightening up the foreground a little bit. If all the incredible color grading tools that Color Finale 2 Pro already had wasn't enough, and these new features definitely solidify Color Finale's place as the best color grading plugin for Final Cut Pro, in my opinion. Don't forget that we have a giveaway for Color Finale 2 Pro that's open for the next two weeks, and you can find a link down below if you'd like to enter. 
If you missed out on the giveaway and you feel that you'd like to just go ahead and buy the plugin, then don't forget to use the coupon code BRAD20 at checkout to get 20% off. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we post future videos. It's also the best way to make sure that you don't miss out on future giveaways. Just saying. Take care guys and I'll catch you in the next one.